Okay, so here's, this is interesting, this story. This time it's interesting. Some of the stuff, uh, the stuff I say you might not find it interesting. But uh, you, you're watching this for a reason. You wouldn't be watching it if you didn't find it somewhat interesting. Unless you just stumbled across it and, you know. If, if that's the case, then, well, uh, <laughs> you might not find this interesting. But if you have watched some of the material, you probably will. Okay, so, here we go. So, <laughs> I was doing a little bit of searching last night when I had some downtime at work. And, uh, just started thinking about these people who, who had been involved in this situation. And, uh, there's one guy who... who really comes to mind and I, I know that he they sent him in basically to let me know I was in the program now he didn't say it he's not going to openly say that but they sent him in to kind of send a message that I was in the program and this was a police officer from Toronto when I was working for a property management company there I've spoken about that before I had a pretty good job at that time I was head of security for a property management company that paid quite well and I had a unit right on the site, which was also taken care of by the company. So it was a pretty decent gig. So um, I was there three years. During the third year, the first two years there were excellent. Um, you know, everything was good. I was promoted by them. Pay was good. Um, and then the third year, of course, everything kind of spiraled downward when I found out that I was in the program. <laughs> and that's when they really, really started to do these things on a, a next level. So, a level I've still, since then, not seen before. It was extreme, let's just say that. And that's the way it is for people who first wake up. They will really, really uh, step on the gas, so to speak. Because they want you to either off yourself, look at this acting here, or, or um, you know, do something violent right off the bat. If they can get you to do it sooner rather than later, that's what they want. So they'll go all in at first. First six months are very difficult for anyone dealing with the shit. I'm gonna wait here. Actors here, look, you notice this? Um, so what they did was, um, there's, there's no question that this, this guy was sent in. So the company I worked for, we were having some issues because like, um, and now I understand that the issues were, were not natural, but, um, Shortly after I was brought in there, they had a homeless shelter that opened across from where I was working. And that was why they brought extra security in and brought me in and, uh, you know, promoted me and all that. Uh, because we had a lot to deal with. It was not easy. But um, nonetheless, it was challenging and it was good at the same time. Um, so uh, then basically what happened was during the third year, like I said, we were dealing with a lot of problems. And I had spoken to the management saying that I don't feel that we're getting adequate assistance from the police to deal with some of these, these issues. Because we were having break-ins regularly. Um, some of our my guards who I managed were getting assaulted by some of the people. Uh, it was bad. And some of that may have been by design. Uh, I don't know. Right? That part of it, I don't know. I mean, it, it was bad, though. So I, I spoke to them. We had a meeting. And I said, you know what? Like, this is... Uh, we need assistance from the police to deal with these issues. These, some of these issues were issues that the, the police should deal with, not not our security staff. Um, you know, because uh, with us, what it was was just to protect these properties. And for, for some of the guards who were working there, it was a little bit overwhelming, and, and I understood that because we were dealing with a lot. So, um, so basically, they sent this guy in. Uh, two guys. Well, but, but the one guy was the one guy who talked more often, who, who talked to me. And so the one guy from the, the management, property management, um, said, I'll set up a meeting with you and a police officer, a local police officer. And you can discuss your concerns and, you know, let them know and, and hopefully they'll be there and be around to assist more. I said, okay, that's great. That sounds good. So <laughs> bear in mind, I was not awake to any, any of the targeting at that point. But they were doing these things kind of, kind of doing them, like the fire department was showing up a lot. But I had no clue it was there was anything to it. I just thought they were around there. I thought, okay, they're dealing with something or whatever. Um, a lot of sirens, but I didn't really, I hadn't quite picked up on what it was at that point. And they hadn't ramped it up 
to full blast either. So, um, this guy, I meet with him. This guy, Matthew, he's a police officer. And he seemed very, he's a very nice guy. I, I mean, he seemed that way. <laughs> anyway, some of these people, you know, they're so too fast, they can pull that off. And uh, at that time, I've discussed this before, if you've heard some of my other videos, um, they had all these tents that were set up across from where I was living and working. And it turned out, of course, later I found out that <laughs> initially they told us they were just homeless people who started setting up tents because of, quote unquote, because of COVID. Which to me seemed stupid because I, I said, you've never let people like set up tents and camp out <laughs> on the property like that um, before. So how does COVID change? I don't, I don't get how COVID changes the fact that they can suddenly, <laughs> even if you, I, I won't go into that, but uh, suffice to say that I, I, I don't know why they were allowing them to do that. So this cop, I just was discussing some of my concerns with him and that felt that to some extent our staff were being overburdened and we were doing the best we could. And he said, yeah, for sure, I understand. He's, he's like, um, he's like, you know, we don't think the tent should be there either, but it's the city, etc. Excuses, basically. One headlight right here. And, uh, so, anyway, uh, so he's like, yeah, well, you know what? He, he gives me his card and he says, we're going to be around more often. You'll see more of us. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's good. Uh, little did I know. I think now, yeah, I am going to be seeing a lot more of them. And he knew right then, and he was trying to give me hints about this, right? Uh, <laughs> this guy's Matthew, this cop. Um, but he seemed like a very, he was a very nice guy, very affable. He wasn't like in any way, I wouldn't say he was like smug or condescending or anything. He was just, a, he seemed a very nice guy, very approachable. Younger guy, I think a few years younger than me, probably, if I had to guess. Um, so... He gives me his card and says, you know, call me anytime, anytime we can help you guys out. We want to help as much as possible. And they're just, you know, they're local uh, cops who worked in that community, which the community was called Liberty Village. And, uh, you know, I've now found out, look at this on the left here, just standing there holding a phone, staring out at the road. Um, uh, we're in red, huh? Go figure. Gotta even have the mannequins in red. Um, so, so... So I'm thinking, this is good. They're, they're going to help us out. And uh, so he and his partner, Matthew, I did start to see more of them. And he would show up. And, um... Fuck sakes. So... So... Okay, now watch, 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 watch. Notice the movement now. So as soon as I get here, it starts moving. Notice? So she's standing there staring out at the sidewalk behind me as I pass while she's holding a phone and looking out at the sidewalk. Okay. Um, and she makes that stupid coughing noise. Uh, so, yeah, so anyway. So, he said, yeah, you know what? You know, you'll, you'll see more of us. We'll help you as much as we can. Because um, I told him, like, look, man, like, we have situations where across the street, it was actually like a soccer stadium across the street, and that's where they were camped out. And subsequently, it turned out that most of them weren't even homeless people. They're just the citizen operatives who literally the city had really creepy. Like, like I can't talk too much about certain aspects because, I mean, it'll get censored. We, if you've seen some of these, let's just say this. If you understand some of these quote-unquote events that aren't what they seem to be, where they use a bunch of people as uh, <coughs> actors... That's what these people were. And I, I started to pick up on that. I started to pick up on that. These people don't look homeless a lot. <laughs> like, they got really nice clothing. Uh, they've all got phones. Um, the nicest, fanciest gear. And they're, like, camped out. Anyway, anyway, which is really weird. So, with that going on, um, this guy said, okay, well, we're going to be around to help you more. He gave me his card. He said, call me anytime. Anytime I can help. So then I f later I find out that the, one of the, the people from the building management had given these two cops a key, to en uh, a key and a fob to enter our main building, where I was, I was situated in the basement area of that uh, building. It, so anyway, so he basically, 
uh, said that they were going to be there to help us more. And we did see more of them. We did see more of them. He would come by and check in with me while I was working because I worked overnight shift. You can see there's a stalker already waiting here by the bus stop up here. Uh, and, and this is probably someone who will start coughing as I get there. So, yeah, so he said, uh, yeah, you know what, we'll, we'll be there to help you. And I was thinking, yeah, this is good. This is what we needed, finally. And so they started to show up. And, uh, but there was some weird stuff that, while, while they did show up a bit, more often than we had excuse me, more often than they, they had previously shown up. And this guy, Matt, he, he, would, he, was, he was fairly good at communicating with, uh, about things. Sometimes he would contact me about certain things and whatnot. And, uh, you know, there, there was no issues there. He's, my communications with him were very good. He was a very affable, nice guy. From what I thought, at least. Um... So then, basically, a couple, some weird things started to happen afterwards. So then, there's a couple times where my guards were out doing their patrols of the area and whatnot, and checking on these buildings. And they're like, uh, sorry, there was one time when I was first. So I was out checking one specific building, and at the end of this road where there's a dead end, this cop is sitting out there with a bunch of his... It's presumably his uh, co-workers. They weren't in uniform, but they were just, uh, they were drinking, drinking beers. This was just after the COVID stuff started, so 2020 at this point. And, uh, and he called to me, said, hey, hey, called my name. And, and uh, I said, oh, hey, man, how are you doing? It's you. I'm thinking, why is he out here standing in front of the building drinking? Um, and they had a bunch of, like, motorcycles, too. Now, that didn't mean much to me at the time, but uh, later, obviously, motorcycles were going to come into play. And that's, that's really even more what they were trying to do. They wanted me to see that, too, that he was involved in it by sending me a message because I was going to see a lot of motorcycles. <laughs> and boy, did I ever after that and hear a lot of motorcycles. So, so Matthew, basically, this cop, he would, uh, <laughs> he's sitting out in front of this building drinking. And uh, I think these were the cops with him. They weren't, like I said, they weren't in uniform, but... He said, oh, we're just coming here because we don't have anywhere else to go and drink because of the COVID stuff. And I think, what? Can't, you can't drink at home? <laughs> I think this seems kind of weird, man. Almost seems like he's BSing here. Um, and I'm also thinking, okay, you're a cop and you're, you're just drinking in public. Uh, So that occurred, and then, uh, okay, so look at here, and then look at here. Now this person here in the blue car is just st uh, sitting there, everything else is closed, staring out at the road. Like I said, these um, parking lots are, are lookout hubs usually, and uh, that's what they're here for. Bus two, perfect timing. Okay, I'll continue this when I, when I get off here. Um, Man, it's cold tonight here. Very cold. See, this is timed here. And across here. Um, yeah, so basically, getting back to what I was saying. So this dude, uh, this cop, um, he starts regularly showing up. And a number of my uh, security guards who, who I supervised would come to me and say, hey, um, we went to check this specific building, and uh, you know that cop you, who, who you know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, he was sitting outside with a bunch of people drinking outside of the building, and he, he asked us, do you want to have a beer with us? Uh, do you want to come over and have a beer with us? And like, the guards are like, no. And he asked me, too. So one night when I showed up <laughs> at the building, they're out there drinking. He's like, hey, hey. And he called my name. Why don't you come over and have a beer with us? And I'm like, because I'm working. I'm not going to have a beer while I'm working. And on top of it, it felt it was kind of uncomfortable, too. I was like, what? Like, this guy's a police officer, and they're standing around outside drinking openly? Um, uh, like, that's kind of weird, man. Um, but I thought, okay. Uh, but but no, I didn't go over and, like, have a beer with them. And I said, I got I to gotta get back to work. So he's like, okay. 
and they were just out there. Now, the whole thing was part of the uh, targeting. There's no question. They had been sent down there to do that. And subsequently, as things progressed, and we were dealing with a lot more issues near that homeless shelter, near the area where all these tents were set up, containing nothing more than citizen operatives, who, who all the local media reported as being homeless people, but were actually just people who were paid to camp out there. I know that for a fact, um, because I saw the situation when they set up this fake uh, scripted event where the police went in and had these fake clashes that were orchestrated with paid protesters <laughs> who supposedly didn't want the tents removed, but were really just, no one cared, you know what I mean? No one would care that much to um, go and protest something like that with science. So these were paid protesters. So anyway, <laughs> getting back to it. Um, so, uh, so then one day in the morning, I get, I abruptly get this text message on my work phone from that cop who I described, uh, Matthew. And he says to me, uh, oh, sorry, so the night before, I had gone to check one building, and I saw a guy at the end of the street outside of the building, and he looked kind of suspicious, but he was wearing a mo he was he was on a motorcycle, and he had a helmet obscuring his face, so I couldn't see his face. And I guess he called to me, and I just went about my business and ignored him, because he wasn't on the property. So, basically, uh, I get a text message the next day from this cop, Matthew, I'm like, first of all, how the heck did he even get my work phone? And why is he text messaging me? <laughs> That's kind of weird. He's like, hey, didn't you see me last night? And I'm thinking, like, no, what are you talking about? And uh, he's like, oh, that was me uh, at the end of the street there. Like, okay, that was you with a motorcycle helmet on and a motorcycle. <laughs> and now you understand that was done with intent, too, with symbolism, because that was to let me know that I'm going to be seeing a lot of people on motorcycles coming up. And also to let me know that the cops were in on that and they were a part of that. But like I said, they're not going to come out and tell you that with words. That's how these people operate. That's how occultists... And this guy's a Freemason. I'm sure, this cop. I know he is. Um, so... <laughs> yeah, so he says to me, um, don't be too surprised. And, and I'm like, what? I'm like, th I'm like, this is getting really weird. The whole situation's weird. Why is he... First of all, why is this cop uh, sending me text messages when I'm off duty, right? That's just weird. And secondly, why did they give him my work phone? Because they obviously gave him my number from my work phone. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe it was, you know, just to let me know, to contact me if there were any issues. Um, so, yeah, that was weird. And then subsequently, then all of a sudden after, now they would, a lot, number of other times, they would go and drink outside of one of our buildings. And it was all just to let me know, I think. To let me know they were in on this whole thing. They, they were a part of it without saying it. Because they're not going to come out and tell you that, ever. It's all done through those types of indirect messages and symbolism. That's how they operate. And so, as things got worse in terms of my... Things that they were doing to let me know I was being targeted... I started to see less and less of this cop until it came a point where I just didn't see him anymore. And uh, he wasn't, you know, checking in with our, to, to assist us or anything, and I, I just didn't see him. <laughs> and then, of course, I finally woke up to what was happening. And at that point, the targeting intensified severely. This you turn here. That made sense. Um, so, then, yeah, so then I didn't see him at all, and eventually things were got to where they were, and I, I just left because the stuff was so bad at that area. I, I had to leave that position. Unfortunately, I just, I had had too much of the harassment, and I just decided, okay, it's time for a change. So then, now years later, I've stumbled across this cop, because I was doing a little bit of research on uh, Twitter, and uh, I contacted him because I wanted to let him know, th the whole purpose of him being sent was to let me know I was in the program. I know that 100%. So anyway, I contacted him on Twitter just to express my appreciation for for, uh, <laughs> for that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, we'll get back to more of that tomorrow.